This video is sponsored by Serverless 360. More about them at the end. Hey, manager guy, guess what? I'm RDP'd into the most important VM we have, a domain controller. Are you crazy, IT guy? I'm doing it over the internet, and it's totally secure with no firewall and no VPN. John, call security, we're gonna get hacked! No, I'm telling you, it's totally secure. And the best part is that anybody can set this up in less than five minutes. No way, that is not how we do things around here. You know, I get that, but the cloud isn't our on-prem data center, and we should stop treating it like it is. When we come to the cloud, we need to think differently. Okay, just turn it off and let's talk about this. How do we connect to our VMs today? Now we build VMs and then attach public IP addresses so we can get into them anytime we want. Yeah, technically that does work, but we've just opened a significant security attack surface. So that's a bad idea. Okay, well we could provision a jump host farm. A what? You know, build a bunch of VMs in the DMZ so the users can RDP to the jump host and then double RDP to their VMs. Yeah, that's kind of better, but we're still exposing our jump host transmitting RDP over the internet, which is less secure. Oh, okay, well, what about, what, what about Azure Virtual Desktop? AVD is a great solution, and it would absolutely secure the connections through the AVD service. But if we're looking for just a simple RDP or SSH connection, AVD is a lot to set up and manage. What else you got? Well, we could create a private tunnel from our on-prem network to Azure through that uh, express route thing or, or, or VPN. All I wanna do is connect to my VM. And every one of those solutions you said can work, but to do them right, they have to be architected and deployed and configured and secured, which adds time and complexity. Well, okay, Mr. IT guy, how should we connect to our VMs in the cloud? By thinking differently. The cloud is made up of tons of services that are specialized for all kinds of stuff. Azure Bastion is a cloud service which will let us RDP or SSH to our VMs securely right over the public internet with zero management and at very low cost, and it all happens right inside the Azure portal. Bastion, huh? But didn't you say that transmitting RDP packets over the internet isn't secure? That's true, but Bastion works differently. Those RDP packets are transformed into a custom protocol and then wrapped with SSL so you're safe from all the normal RDP attacks. Okay, fair enough. How's it work? Well, it's a managed service, so almost everything is done for us. Now, under the covers, Bastion is built on top of Virtual Machine ScaleSats, which is a collection of VMs that are managed as a single resource. And the more users that log on, Bastion will scale up to meet our demand. Kind of sounds like a jump host farm, but scalable. That's right, and there are two different SKUs of Bastion. Basic and Standard. Basic will give us two different VM instances, while Standard can allow up to 50 instances. And there are some extra features that you get with Standard that I'll tell you more about in a minute. But Bastion will require a special subnet to function in our virtual network called Azure Bastion Subnet, and that needs to be at least a slash 26 so it can accommodate those 50 instances. Okay, sounds interesting. Can you show me how to build it and try it out? Sure can. In the Azure portal, I'll select any of my virtual networks and on the left, click Bastion. Then just click the deploy button. And that's it. Bastion will be ready for our users to connect in about two or three minutes. Now, while that's building, here's another virtual network. And this time you see the deploy button is grayed out because we don't have enough free address space to create that slash 26 Bastion subnet. So we can just add a new address space right here, and now we can click deploy. And while that's finishing, here's another virtual network. This time, let's click the configure button. Select the appropriate subscription and resource group to build in, and then give Bastion a name. Then select the region and tier. Wait, hold up, does it matter where we deploy Bastion? And do I need more than one to manage all my VMs? Well, it is always best to build our resources as close together as possible, but you can use Bastion to manage VMs across regions and across subscriptions, as long as the virtual network where Bastion is, is peered to those other networks. Fair enough. So I'll just pick the basic SKU for now. And just for fun, let's create a new virtual network. And we need to create a new subnet called Azure Bastion Subnet or you can just change the default subnet here. And Bastion does need to be a slash 26. Next, the Bastion service will need a public IP address so it's accessible from the internet. And then click next, 
and we can add all of our standard tags. Then create. Okay, now back in our original network, Bastion is already ready to go. And things look a little different now. We have a drop down where we can select our VM and then enter our username and password and click connect. A new browser tab opens and we jump right into our VM. Okay, I got to admit that is kind of cool, but how are you authenticating? The default authentication is handled by NTLM, which means if our VMs are not joined to the domain, you can only use local accounts. But if they are joined to a domain, then we can use our domain accounts. Hmm, okay, that's pretty good, but do we have any other options? Yep, there's a new authentication feature for domain users to rely on Kerberos instead of NTLM. Oh, I can see where this is going. You do? Yep, Azure AD Kerberos, here we come. Yeah, actually that would be kind of cool, but we'll have to wait and see if that feature comes out. So how do we make it use Kerberos? Now, since Kerberos requires a domain controller for authentication, your virtual network's DNS servers need to list their IP addresses so that the VMs in the network can find the domain and complete authentication. With that out of the way, search at the top for Bastion and click on your Bastion service. Now on the left, go to configuration and switching from NTLM to Kerberos is just a single checkbox. Then click apply. Wow, that is super easy. Barely, barely any time at all, I know. But what's the user experience like? Okay, let's pull up a VM and at the top, click connect then put in your username and password and click the connect button and there you go. All right, that does look pretty great, but I, I bet you have to redeploy to get to the standard SKU. Upgrading from basic to standard is as simple as changing the tier here in the dropdown. And while we're at it, let's check all the boxes. That way we get all the features that are available and then click apply. And on top of Kerberos authentication, we can increase our instances from two up to 50 manually or just let the service take care of it for us. Yeah, nice. And I was talking with Microsoft guy the other day and he was telling me that the biggest feature improvement that people have been looking for is the ability to upload and download their own files through Bastion, which now we can do because standard supports native RDP and SSH clients. Now you're talking. And that'll give our users the full RDP experience they're used to while it's wrapped through the security of Bastion. Now to kick that off, we have to use a command prompt to open the RDP session. And if we want to increase security even more, we can make it use a custom port for this whole thing instead of 3389. Okay, okay, I'm convinced. Azure Bastion is super easy to manage and deploy, and I've got lots of configuration options to choose from, so what should I do next? Great question, manager guy. And I'll tell you right after this message from our sponsor. The cloud can be a complex place, but Serverless 360 is trusted by many of the world's leading organizations to remove application blind spots and resolve your problems rapidly. You can instantly visualize, monitor, and fix any issues in your cloud apps, and then achieve end-to-end -end tracking of your business process flows, and Serverless 360 will save you time by auto-generating your documentation, turning your Azure subscription data into actionable insights for usage, security, and cost. Try Serverless 360 free for 15 days, or you can book a demo using the links in the resource section under the video. Now, the next thing you should do is watch this video right here so you can learn how to further lock down Azure Bastion with NSGs or the Azure Firewall. Happy learning.